One of the probably uh, most insightful things that I'll take away from kind of your le lecture is this idea that joy um, comes from the, the wisdom of, of suffering, um, which is not the same as joy coming from suffering. Um, I've heard a quote where it talks about suffering without meaning kind of leads to despair or, you know, um, hopelessness or, and I just, I, I, I love that. Um, and so I'm just wondering for youth ministers that are, um, that are facing tragedies with their youth, like a young person getting shot or a substance abuse or, you know, a parent dies, how do they begin to cultivate that wisdom with their young people? Um, what are like immediate practices that they can implement within that setting that will help their young people develop a sense or cultivate a sense of wisdom about the suffering or tragedy they're walking through in the moment? Um, so one of the things that I, I, I think about in terms of, of accessing not just for the youth to um, see see wisdom, right? To like uh, come to that realization, but also how does the youth minister access that from their youth? I think it's also a lot of trust building um, in terms of not just in terms of the way that they approach the question or approach, right? The different there are many that we can talk about different practices of how to do it. Um, but I think that it's important for the youth leader to have been cultivating and if them haven't, to start cultivating ways to win their trust, to, uh, for them to actually be open about their fears, right? About their feelings and in terms of a fa and facing tragedy and losing a loved one and losing a loved one uh, because of violence, uh, I'm thinking. So, and, 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 and sharing those fears for, for young people are, are, is not easy. So for, for a minister to create a space where they feel that they're heard and understood, right? And then they can be real. Uh, it's very important um, in, in building that relationship. And, and I think it also has to do with uh, personality and also how how prepared uh, the minister is to address X or Y uh, topic because they youth can smell fear and they know that you're not ready and that you're not prepared or that you don't know what you're talking about so if if you notice certain tendencies and certain practices or certain um, things that continue to arise in your community I think that your duty is to to research and to learn and to learn the context and to learn how to deal with it and to know your limitations of, wait, this is absolutely outside, not just my comfort zone, but my knowledge zone. Like I've never dealt, dealt with this. So it's, it's, it's part of being a responsible minister also uh, to, to, to see where their lines are and to go research, go ask or bring in somebody who would be able to um, to work with them and deal with that because also I think that young people see that care and see that intentionality and see that um, commitment towards, no, we, we, we are a community, we are working through this together and in that process of preparation, obviously. And it takes, this, just, this is a lot of hard work. This is always a lot of hard work, but it's very re um, rewarding and passionate work um, and very important work. So in, 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 Going into all this uh, preparation and, and the, the relationship that you've built, uh, I think that I would hope that in these practices of preparing oneself and these practices of intentionality that they begin to see the wisdom that it takes to just begin to do these processes. So, I, I mean, it's just... I don't know. I sometimes I see I see the scaffolding of, mm -hmm. of things, and that's usually how I think. Um, so seeing the layers, the things that you've begun to build. Uh, I remember teaching uh, an introduction to the Gospels uh, for uh, a Bible Institute, and uh, once I told him, like I unveiled the like the big. Uh, response for something I can't remember what it was that this the students were just surprised and then I'd like wait 
Don't go to church and tell John about this because you know we've gone through a process. And if right. you just tell them this, they won't have any. They won't have a floor. They won't. They won't have where to stand. So it's that building up to you know that either big revelation or that you know moment of trust. That moment when 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 the youth come to you or you know how to deal with them and they eventually learn how to do the layers. They learn how to build up the wisdom out of whatever situation to get to where they need to be. But we just, you need to build that floor. I think one way of talking about that is that all of the practices we named are basically practices of culture creation, mm. creating culture. So that, so that you're, you're talking about building a scaffolding, you're also creating a culture that, that enables young people to live into their struggles, that offers the time and creates the spaces where people can actually speak speak what they feel like they need to say, sometimes unfiltered. They need opportunities to do that. And they may want to dwell on something for a very long time and come back to it many times because it is important to them in a way that you are not likely to understand. And maybe no one else around them understands, but creating a culture in which in the invitation to share and to listen deeply actually is one of the ways of building trust. And it's also one of the ways of encouraging young people to live into their struggles, mm -hmm. not just to try to get over it, mm -hmm. but to live into them and to wrestle with them and to draw wisdom from tragedy and suffering, not to try to explain it away. So I think offering time, being present, and and creating spaces is, is the best work we can do in creating culture. And sometimes the young people won't ever share anything personal with them, but they know we were there. And sometimes they will eventually get to, to the point where they share something that's really important to them that they want to share, but they need to make sure they can trust you or trust this group before they do it. So I think there are ways in which we can actually encourage young people to live into those struggles and to draw wisdom without imposing, here's what I think is going on. Let me explain. Let me tell you why death is not the end of life. When a kid loses someone who's dear to them, they don't, they don't want to hear that. Sometimes they do. Some kids do, but mostly they want to mourn. They have stuff inside they need to express even if they don't do it in words. Yeah. I think that's, that's very, very important, just the, con the con continuity of it, the continuity of, of going back as much as they need to, not as much as you need to. You might, you might know it, you might understand. And that's, I think, also part of, of them realizing the wisdom that comes from them uh, after you're, you've set, you know, the place and you've planted the seed, but that yeah. that's a very such a very important key. Thank you, like that, um, seeing it through, not just answering it away. Yeah. And I also think that that's an important role for people who are leaders in youth ministry, whether they're youth themselves or lay lay leaders or clergy leaders. I think they can create help create spaces in a congregation where. Mm -hmm where the youth are not just feeling they can trust you, mm -hmm. but they're feeling increasingly that this congregation is, is a community where that we can trust, or at least we know where we can trust. We have places we can go, people we can talk to. I think that's critical. Mm 